As a part of today's celebration, the Office of Arts and Culture sponsored an MLK I Have a Dream Youth Contest, asking young people in the greater Seattle area to respond to Dr. King's iconic speech and using poetry, essay, spoken word, rap, or music to reflect on where they think we are now in relation to MLK's dream. Today, we're thrilled to have the five youth who wrote the winning entries present their original pieces. Thank you very much for having me today. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you about what MLK's words mean to me. His words were the dream of a man who believed the U.S. could reconcile its differences between its diverse groups of people. Fifty years later, and we look around the same streets that MLK marched in his pursuit of equality, and we see a false sense of accomplishment. We find a blindfolded view of what we want society to be and what it really is. Times seem to have changed from the time of MLK, but in reality, they have been enhanced. Who was this man? Who was MLK? And what, what did these words mean? To me, it, it still feels like a dream that we're, not, we're still chasing when it happened over 50 years ago. One of the reasons why I wrote the speech is to kind of give my take on what I thought, you know, MLK's words and what, how, you know, his words have come to a point where it's enough talking, you know, we actually need to do something about it. It's time we work towards seeing a world where hate and oppression are eradicated, eradicated by, by love, love and, and peace. peace. Um, and that was, for me, that was the, you know, it's kind of vague in its meaning, but it, it holds so much truth and value that for what I want to see. And I think that was my favorite line to say throughout because I saw the reaction of the crowd and it was, you know, everyone was on it, everyone was nodding their heads and everyone was saying, you know, we, maybe we should be thinking like this. My piece is titled, King's Call to Action. Martin Luther King's words echo through the streets of every city in the United States, from the origins of the Civil Rights Movement in Birmingham, Alabama, to the skyscrapers of New York City. His words were the dream of a man who believed the U.S could reconcile its differences between its diverse groups of people. Fifty years later, and we look around the same streets that MLK marched in his pursuit of equality, and we see a false sense of accomplishment. We find a blind, bl blindfolded view of what we want society to be and what it really is. Recent events in Ferguson and the misuse of police power show that times seem to have changed from the uh, the times seem to have changed from the time of MLK, but in reality, they have been enhanced. We believe that we have come a long way from the days of segregation, and in a way, that is true. We don't see public segregation. We don't see for whites only restrooms or people of color having to give up their seats on a bus. However, although this type of racial discrimination has been somewhat erased, in other ways, it has been increased. How is it that we see a higher percentage of people of color in prisons when they aren't the only ones committing the crimes? How is this possible when the crime rate for whites is the same or sometimes higher than that of people of color? Today, we still see the underlying effects of segregation. We still see injustice like the cases in Ferguson and others around the country. We don't need to talk about change. They say politicking is easy, but actions take courage. We need to come together and end the bickering between ourselves if we ever want to achieve the world that MLK envisioned. It's time for action. It's time we work towards seeing a world where hate and oppression are eradicated by love and peace. We need to change the perceptions of how we see one another. And I believe that all, that, that all starts with the youth. The youth are the future. They'll be the next ones on the front lines that will dictate how the world will function in the coming decades. We, will ne we need to show them guidance and tell them and the world that we can be united. If we ever wish to see King's dreams become a reality, we need to realize that fighting and violence are not the answer. We need to come together hand in hand and work towards a better tomorrow. Thank you. Their words hit like bullets. You stupid, why don't you just take it off? It makes you uglier. She doesn't have hair, that's why she wears it. Although third grade may seem like a faded memory, to me they're still a part clear as pure water in my mind. Every time I got on the bus, I would try to hide my face, yet they always managed to bring me down, causing tears to sting my eyes. It made me feel like a clueless soldier on a battlefield as they shot their words at me. But they didn't know. Yakut means as precious as a ruby, not something disgusting and ugly like they made it out to be. 
was about stereotypes. So then I thought about it more and I suddenly got the idea that I've had experiences of people um, just thinking of me differently because I wear a hijab or because I'm from Iraq or because I'm Muslim. It still hurt and it still made me cry when people used to say these things about me. But then I realized that, you know what, that's just the way they think and I should be happy with the way I am. And that's kind of what motivated me to write it. Because it's just like, what's the point of caring? Because they're not me and they shouldn't care about me. I'm, I'm my own person. At the end of the day, these experiences are valuable in a way. Now my heart and emotions can take the pain of being called a terrorist, people asking if I have hair, or even my gender. It made me mature and comprehend how their brains work. My tears aren't triggered so easily, but it will always leave me wondering. In a way, it is still a dream, but we have made a lot of improvements from his time. But I still believe there is racism. There is still judgment about your appearance. There is still judgment about your religion. There is just judgment in general. And you can never wipe that out of humanity. It will always be a dream, but we can always take baby steps to improve that dream and maybe get closer to it. If all people who made fun of me had just spared some time to know me, they'd realize that I'm more similar to them than they think. Because, because truly, truly, the fact, the fact is, is, we're, we're all, all human. human. Because that's the truth. We don't need to say that you're unhuman because we were, we're all human. We're not like different species. We're just all human and that I feel like that really got a message across to a lot of people that it's not just Muslims being judged. It's not just black people being judged. It's everyone that's being judged. Um, it's an honor to be here and my piece is titled, I'm a terrorist. Their words hit like bullets. You stupid, why don't you just take it off? It makes you uglier. She doesn't have hair, that's why she wears it. Although third grade may seem like a faded memory, to me they're still a part clear as pure water in my mind. On the bus, there were three guys who wouldn't get off my case because I wear a hijab, headscarf, and my unique name. Their comments stabbed my eight-year-old heart every time. My ability to speak English was low, making them more powerful than me. Every time I got on the bus, I would try to hide my face, yet they always managed to bring me down, causing tears to sting my eyes. It made me feel like a clueless soldier on a battlefield as they shot their words at me. But they didn't know. Yakut means as precious as a ruby, not something disgusting and ugly like they made it out to be. I wanted to speak those words, to let them rush out of my mouth, breaking their supremacy down, yet they always stay trapped. Their laughs would echo in my mind as I desperately attempted to create a comeback, but failing, resulting in their victory. Yes, that happened years ago. But if I could have explained the truth, it wouldn't be a bad memory. I would have told them the true meaning of my name, the true reason why I wear a hijab, guide them to the reality of the matter instead of allowing them to stay locked in a jail of dark lies. The bombing of the Twin Towers occurred years ago. However, it generated stereotypes that are still floating around. People assumed Islam was all about violence and war, hatred against anyone who isn't Muslim. Despite the fact I have green eyes and light skin, I've received comments about being a terrorist. Last year, one morning, I was walking inside school when I felt a tug on my backpack. I looked behind me to see a boy from my math class. Terrorist, terrorist, she's got a gun in her pocket. His voice was like poison to my ears. I pulled my backpack out of his grasp, walking away. My thoughts were blurred. This was the first time that I understood what that word meant. Other times I heard someone being called that were when I was younger and didn't speak English. He just, he just called me a, a terrorist. Snapping out of it, I headed into class greeting my friends. Conversation initiated normally, but there was still a portion of my brain thinking about what he said. A question popped up. Is that the image portrayed in a lot of people's minds? But I would never hurt anyone. Why would he think that? I've treated him with nothing except kindness. It just... My train of thoughts was interrupted by the bell ringing. I sighed, realizing that being sad about it isn't the solution. I realized that some people will stay in the foggy forest of stereotypes, like the three guys that teased me on the bus. I began packing my things to leave when laughs diverted my attention. It was two guys joking about hairlines. I smiled when one questioned, Hey, Yakut, do you have hair? My smile vanished quicker than a snap. Yes, I have hair, my voice firm and irritated. Bro, she probably don't even have a hairline. That didn't even make sense. A volcano erupted inside my mind. 
If they were genuinely unknowing, I wouldn't have been frustrated. But they had a friend who wears a hijab, and she decided to show her hair to them. They knew very well I had hair. They were simply teasing me for the sake of being annoying. A sigh escaped my mouth as I walked out. I recalled another time when someone called me a boy. People assumed information about me without even knowing me. It made my mood transform from a sunny day to a cloudy one. Why don't they ask why I wear it if they honestly didn't know? At the end of the day, these experiences are valuable in a way. Now my heart and emotions can take the pain of being called a terrorist, people asking if I have hair, or even my gender. It made me mature and comprehend how their brains work. My tears aren't triggered so easily, but it will always leave me wondering, why judge someone based on their religion? Why judge someone based on their appearance? Why judge someone based on their ethnicity? Muslims have been treated unfairly for some time now, so I speak not only for myself, but others. People don't face that these assumptions spoken out loud only draw others away from them. If all people who made fun of me had just spared some time to know me, they'd realize that I'm more similar to them than they think. Because truly, the fact is, we're all human. I don't really have a title for my, my poem slash rap, but I'm going to call it Life Goes On. I have a dream, and it's a different type of dream, that everyone will get along and be on the same team. That just because you're black, you won't have to act all thug. And just because you're white, you want to feel like you're above everyone else. Now, I'm not saying that all white people feel like they're on top. Just stop. You're making conclusions. And don't make this into some type of seclusion. I'm just trying to show you this messed up illusion that every time someone stereotypes, they are added to the contusion of the world's pride of not being secluded. Now, let me clear all this dire confusion. I'm trying to paint a picture in your mind of Martin Luther King's vision. He took a position that everyone's equal, and it doesn't matter what the pigment of your skin is. He decided to not use his sight and use his vision. He never saw the world through an optical illusion. Now, that was his decision. He saw the world through lenses, and they weren't prescription. They were lenses of justice. Now, let me go back to the subject. It's not very complex. It doesn't matter your sex. This idea is not perplexed. This is not a rant. This is just a call for those who feel the same. This world of wild ideas can never be tamed. If you, build, if you believe in stereotypes, you should feel ashamed because all of us are in the same lane. We are not competing against each other. We are competing for this corrupted idea called fame. I know, right? Why is this African kid letting out, letting out all this pent up rage? It's because I believe in this idea of being the same. That's why I'm filling my heart on this page. We are all equals. This is not a poem slash rap. This is I Have a Dream, the sequel. There is a dream that we share. It is a dream shared by all humankind. A dream that is engraved in the minds of the oppressed and carved in the souls of the abused. It is not the dream you forget when you wake up because it is the dream of justice and equality. This is the dream that Martin Luther King Jr. led us towards. I really wanted to focus on how his I Had a Dream speech affected me. The first time I heard that speech, I was in third grade, and it brought me to tears. I took the parts that I thought were really important, which is mainly the dream, and that we share this dream as a society. And there's a dream that we share that causes us to hope, because we know that there is still more work to be done. We have these problems that eerily relate to the civil rights movement, but they're more complicated now. It's not just a fact about right and wrong. It's more how to find the right and how to differentiate between the wrong. We know our voices matter, so we will march singing, we shall overcome. Because, because we, we will, will overcome, overcome someday. someday. I found that very important because um, during the civil rights movement, they walked down the street singing that song, and those words st stick with you. We shall overcome. We will overcome. He knew the dream of justice and equality, and he shared it with us all. He knew the struggle of oppression and defeat, but he taught us never to stop. I don't know if my poem was a call to action to anyone, but if there were people who felt that way, I think that's like my point got across. My poem is called, There is a Dream That We Share. There is a dream that we share. It is a dream shared by all humankind. A dream that is engraved in the minds of the oppressed and carved in the souls of the abused. 
a dream that is shared by every human who has felt pain. This is the dream that is with you every waking moment, sleeping moment. It is not the dream you forget when you wake up because it is the dream of justice and equality. This is the dream that Martin Luther King Jr. led us towards. His words showing us that we are broken as a society, that we need renewal. Martin Luther King Jr. believed in the rights of all people. He knew the dream of justice and equality and he shared it with us all. He knew the struggle of oppression and defeat, but he taught us never to stop. Now we will never stop because there is a dream that we share that brings us to strive to achieve the justice and equality and peace that all people deserve. The acceptance where someone is able to stand up and say, I'm gay and take pride in that. The ability to march and sing through the streets protesting for what you believe in. And the change where we can have our first black president and we celebrate that. And there's a dream that we share that causes us to hope because we know that there is still more work to be done while people march and throw up their hands to say, hands up, don't shoot, where we can make a change about police brutality by saying, I can't breathe, because black lives matter, and that's a fact. There's a dream that we share that makes us long for justice and equality. We know our voices matter, so we will march singing, we shall overcome, because we will overcome someday. There is a dream that we share. First place winner, y'all, Miss Adelia Scott. My poem is called Sometimes I Dream. Sometimes I find myself dreaming, yet I'm wide awake staring through reality, screaming, this must be a mistake. 50 years later, we still live by the same four words of the same speech. We try to walk the same walk, we even try to mimic the way he preached. Yet we fall through on the follow through. When I was asked to write something about Martin Luther King's speech, I just tried to channel what it was I felt as a child. And then as becoming an adult, what it was that I would see in my environment and how hearing the same speech every single year from you know, adolescence to adulthood, what did I feel needed to be added to it? Or what did I feel when I listened to it and how did I feel a change within me. Ferguson and all that had a had a really big impact because, you know, Michael Brown was 18. I'm 19. I have a younger brother who's 16. I tried to make it feel as if these are my people. They are black people. They're black men. Could have been my father. The black women could have been my mother. I channeled it all within as if these were my family members, and it was written with a sense of pain, as Martin's speech was written. Last night I had a dream. As I stood in the middle of the nation's capital, I began to scream, shots have been fired. Over the balconies railing, Dr. King. I would see that there is a, um, there is a sense of, you need to mellow out sometimes the rage. You can't, you can't have too much anger because then people are just like, oh, this is a lot, right? And then, you, then there's also the contrast, you can't have too much love because then it's just like, oh, that's a lot. So it's always um, the middle ground. It was love in there at the end for me to say that, you know, black women are queens and black men are kings. But yes, I'm, I'm angry that I, that I call, that I have to call my brother every single day just to say, are you okay? Are you safe? As you walk down the street, but I need to think about it as I leave the house, am I safe? If I walk down this path, will I be as safe as if I were to walk down this path? So there's, there's anger because some, so many things that are happening shouldn't be happening. Martin was telling me a dream as I woke up and he told me all the evils he'd seen. Malcolm handed me a pencil and told me to succeed by any means, means necessary. necessary. And as, as I, I began, began to write, write the, the tablet began to bleed. It's my favorite piece part because these are two men that in history, they always said they came from two different backgrounds. And in fact, they, they kind of came from the same. Malcolm grew up in a church. Martin grew up in a church. Malcolm believed that there was a will, there's a way. There's no reason that you can't succeed by any means necessary. 
even as I write and no one hears me, even as I write and no one wants to read me or, or see this, I'm still gonna write it. We shall overcome, we shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe that with this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together. No longer will we turn the channel and not see. No. Forever, it will remain. People will still be repeating what I said, I hope, as they repeat what Martin says 50 years later from now, or what Malcolm or what Huey say 50 years later from now. As people cried on my way out, and as people have you began to reach out to me, I believe, I believe so. I believe if I feel it, you feel it. And as much as it, as I felt it when I gave it, I can see it through so many people's eyes. So the lasting impression I believe it will have. My poem is called Sometimes I Dream. Sometimes I find myself dreaming, yet I'm wide awake staring through reality screaming, this must be a mistake. 50 years later, we still live by the same four words of the same speech. We try to walk the same walk, we even try to mimic the way he preached. Yet we fall through on the follow through. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. Who am I and who are you? For 400 years, our ancestors fought in captivity. 400 years used and abused. 146,000 days, 6,083 hours unable to protect you. 150 years removed, tell me what's new. Last night I had a dream. As I stood in the middle of the nation's capital, I began to scream, shots have been fired. Over the balconies railing, Dr. King. 10 shots in the middle of the neighborhood streets, Michael Brown. Two shots in the park, Tamir Rice. One shot in the dark, Trayvon Martin. 50 shots on his wedding day. Sean Bell, one bullet through a sleeping seven-year-old girl's head, Ayanna Jones, Walmart customers riddled with shell casings and bullets, Sean Crawford, guns mistaken as tasers, Oscar Grant, seven shots in his back, four shots through his chest, Kamani Gray, hands cuffed behind his back, yet they still managed to attack one bullet through his chest, Victor White the third. The police are on a rampage. The color black is the target. Martin was telling me a dream. As I woke up and he told me all the evils he'd seen. Malcolm handed me a pencil and told me to succeed by any means necessary. As I began to write, the notebook began to bleed. How many heroes must we lose just because we want to be proud and free? Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, Huey P. Newton, Tupac Shakur, Sam Cooke, Marvin Gaye, Mega Evers. Last night I had a dream. As I witnessed them assassinate not only the man, but his character, I began to weep. Last night I had a dream. As I begin to speak, they begin to choke me with the words, young, dumb, ignorant, and naive. Last night I had a dream as I stood back and watched them march, unable to participate because I, in fact, envisioned violent thoughts. As I attempted to cash a check given to me by the nation that came back with the words stamped, insufficient funds. I am not satisfied, nor will I ever be satisfied as they continue to mask lies with excuses conceived in the darkness. This morning, I had a dream that maybe it all isn't as bad as it seems, that maybe all the suffering is actually awakening, yet all the suffering is turning into heartache and pain, and I'm beginning to get angry, and I'm beginning to become numb. Today I have a dream that my brothers will take their place as kings, and that my sisters will realize they are once again queens, that we will first le learn to again love each other, that our hair is in fact our crown and not our weakness, that our skin is as pure as coffee and that our smiles shine like elephant tusk, uncut diamonds, pure gold. Last night I had a dream that again we valued our culture and listened as one another spoke. Last night I had a dream that my call for action 
became beautiful pleas, became songs, became lyrics for peace. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe that with this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together. No longer will we turn the channel and not see. No longer will we Bobby Martin's dream. I say to you today and my friends, even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. I will forever have a dream. I have a dream that this nation will rise up. And if America is to become a great place, this must be true. Last night I had a dream that the lifespan of black children was no longer cut short. That we didn't need to wear our deceased upon our t-shirts. That we didn't need to explain to them why our lives matter. And if it's necessary, they'll listen to my dream because last night I had a dream. And to some, it may be similar to Martin King's. To me, I just find myself dreaming. All I ever wanted was justice. All I ever dreamed for was peace. Last night I had a dream. Sometimes I find myself dreaming. I believe that someday Martin's dream will come true. I'm unsure if it's in my lifetime. And since I'm not even in the middle of my life, I don't even want to gauge it yet. I don't, I hope that I can see his dream come true. I would love to see the day, you know. I will still keep on waking up in the morning and, and believing that we can. And in, in the end, you know, we'll see. I guess we'll see. We can always get closer to it, but we can't achieve it completely because in the society we live in, you can't wipe judgment out. I don't think that'll take just however long I'm going to be, al be alive. I think it's going to have to take generations to come, and we're going to have to remember his legacy for generations so we can continue fixing things and continue making things better. We're still fighting, and it's beautiful that we can still fight, that there is no giving up, that we will prevail. We will make, somehow we will reach it, but no, not yet. We're still climbing that ladder.